Yo, what's up, everybody? It's JD, and welcome back to a new episode of JD Radio. Oh, my goodness. Four weeks in a row. It's somewhat consistent. I'm learning how to podcast. It's a lot of work, but uh, shout out to everybody who's watching on YouTube because uh, y'all are keeping me uh, sane. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally uploading uh, the episodes once a week, every Monday. And then I'm getting the clips out every day after and maybe a bonus uh, stand up video. Hey, shout out to everybody who likes the stand up comedy uh, podcast. Wait, no. What is it? Uh, li- uh, vlogs. Vlogs. It's like a stand up comedy vlog. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. Maybe we'll go back to uh, OG vlogs in the future. But for now, uh, feel free to enjoy those. I've got another one that I've already recorded and it'll probably come up uh, maybe maybe end of the week. I'm not 100 percent sure. But this week. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Speaking of which, if you're listening to the audio portion of this, hey, why don't you hit that uh, rate rate and review and leave some uh, positive feedback on the pod. Uh, <laughs> so what's going on with me? Um, I'm living life. I'm enjoying myself. Things are good. My mental health is great. I've been manifesting things, which is awesome. I'm actually possibly working on another podcast which i know that you all are probably like jd there's too many already but um a consistent one a a company wants to work with me on one so i might host it and it'll be like a nice little fun uh side project and i'll be posting and uploading and and, uh, collaborating with them to make this like interesting uh thing so that's an interesting thing that i'm looking forward to and it's kind of collaborative with audience members because i think we might be taking viewer calls on there and riffing and ranting and rambling rambling i don't know (laughs) besides that though things have been good i've been staying focused staying busy staying happy uh happy healthy marriage doing all the things and yeah just you know having fun kind of rambling about the news once a week i guess feel free to send me some audio messages or uh some regular anonymous messages you can click the link in the bio the link tree dot whatever uh jd radio and uh, send me things if you want to and uh you know if you just leave comments on these videos and hit the like button and share and do all the algorithmic things that help uh, this thing thrive, then we'll keep doing it. And I appreciate y'all. I think I'm trying to get to a hundred episodes and then figure out what the plan is after that. Like, do I want to continue after a hundred or do I want to switch up the format and change things up? That's what I'm thinking right now. Also, I apologize for audio listeners. I feel like I can hear the background of my office. Yeah, you can hear it. That's really loud. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully it's not too distracting for y'all and in the future I will try to maybe do some sort of like vocalization thing that gets rid of the background noise uh, actually I could do that right now but then anytime I snap or clap or do anything that makes noise it will go away uh, we- we'll see what happens maybe I do that on this episode maybe I don't but with that let's get into it because this week is we got crazy things to talk about Okay, so the news story of the month, well, I guess the beginning of the month and also the last week, Diddy, Diddy or Diddy, I don't know, listen, uh, P. Diddy, man, <laughs> he's, man, wow, I don't, I don't know how else to explain this, we all know about how he got called out by Cassie, and Cassie filed a lawsuit against him, and he immediately paid it within uh, 24 hours because I'm sure he did not want to take that to court with all the allegations in there. Since then, there have been like four other uh, lawsuits that have come his way, some from women uh, in the past who came through to the studio to record record music and hang out. Uh, Also, one of his recent producers uh called him out and we talked about that a little bit during the meek mill uh conversation so now homeland security thinks there is a trafficking um scenario here and because of that diddy is (laughs) where aware is diddy san diego sorry he's on he was on the run earlier this week or last week he was on the run as you know i'm getting you 
topics a week after because uh, that's how podcasts work. But yeah, Diddy was on the run. They raided his homes in both Miami and Los Angeles, and I've got some footage of it. We're going to watch it a little bit and react to it. But, you know, first thoughts. Hey, man. Hey, man. It's getting kind of kooky. It's getting kind of crazy. I didn't know. I, listen, I, I all the allegations. I was like, wow, that's terrible. Did he? OK. And people have been saying stuff about him for years. But now it feels like he's going to get that R. Kelly treatment. I don't I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm sure it's going to have to go to a judge or a whatever you want to call a court and then we'll figure it out. But until then, let's discuss. All right, here we are. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. So this is footage of him being raided and then I guess also footage of uh, just him doing his thing, living his life, being Diddy. But also it says federal officials were not authorized to publicly discuss the details of the investigation. Yeah, that's the thing. Nobody knows exactly why they were at the house. Most people think it's about all the allegations and there's possibly a trafficking situation, but there's nothing that's been confirmed by the Homeland Security Division, you know? But they they rolled, they pulled up deep though. Assorted news media arrived outside of his house, uh, his LA mansion uh, on Clubview Drive, but he was not there. He had already hopped on a plane to try to get boy he was trying to <laughs> take that take that somewhere else he was trying to get out of there man it's kind of crazy federal agents were also seen on the outside of uh combs's miami beach home whole lot of feds bro like it's a crazy amount of people and, and then my thing is like i guess that, that's all the information we got but my question is if 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 the like my thing is is there something deeper is there something deeper that we don't know about because for homeland Secur security to get involved that means that there have been some real like egregious uh terrible crimes committed committed but they, homeland security hasn't told us anything about that they just said hey bro we we, we pulling up to diddy's crib we in there OK, we got to be there now. It has come to light that, you know, more or less Diddy had, you know, a thing for these these things that we call freak offs. That's what we found out about them from the Cassie uh, lawsuit freak offs when he invites people to a well, mainly invited Cassie to a party or to a situation where he hired hired a male escort. He wanted Cassie to sleep with said escort and then he wanted to watch. And I'm not sure if the freak off went farther down than that. Maybe I'm not sure, uh, you know, but people always talked about how Diddy throws parties and everyone is uh, now quoting Cat Williams from the Club Shay Shay interview talking about Diddy always throwing parties, but you got to say no to a Diddy party. You got to say no. So, so, so I honestly do not know what to think, but um. Uh, it seems that's kind of just the word on the street. Again, this is all uh, speculation and, and public allegations, but in, in the court of public opinion, he's getting fried right now. Like, it is very bad. Um, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see if we... I know that uh, Torre, who used to be a VJ slash, I believe, an interviewer and a host on um, MTV, talked about it. He talked about how he had a friend... Actually, you know what? Do we have the? Let's see if we have the foot footage right here. Uh, we well maybe some. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna just switch over to this and listen a little bit and see what happens. Here we go. Wait. Here we go. We did also see uh, Diddy's sons arrested. They were detained. They weren't detained. arrested. They were just detained. Oh, yeah, but what detained. is going on? Well, it, it seems that there are several people who are saying things about Combs to the government, and they are trying to figure out what's going on. I found it interesting that they had enough 
to get a search warrant, right, yeah. for multiple places, but not enough yet to arrest him. So we're in the investigation phase, and clearly they don't care right. if we let him know what that we know what's going on. Yeah. But it seems part of uh, part of his whole life, his whole journey, has been this sort of scorched earth campaign where you see him continuing to succeed or do big things and leave people in his wake hurt. We go back to CCNY, which he, a, a, a party that he overpromoted, that people yes. ended up getting killed. You think about the many artists who either left, you know, in complaint or went to the church or, you know, died Ace. after, you okay. know, I mean, there was a lot of dis, a lot of disheartened artists who left him yeah. that he raised up Shine. And, uh, on and on. Um, and now this, this large growing number of people who are alleging crazy stuff yes. about him. Yeah. And these are things that people in the industry have been hearing about. It's giving time. R. Kelly to write. It's giving, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's disturbing. You know, <laughs> I was personally disturbed many years ago, okay? I, I I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I And he said, yes. And they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? And he wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh, and the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like oh, this is this is God. how it goes. Okay, yeah. okay. So to hear that things went even further with potentially, allegedly, many other people, yeah. it, it, it's, it's not, I don't, it, you know, we, we feel like we've seen this coming. Well, we, there was the situation. I'm going to stop right there because, yeah. All right. So that's Torrey's story. He said that he had like a cousin, friend, nephew, family member and was like, oh, yeah, Diddy, yo, give him an inter internship and, um, you know, hook my boy up. And then I guess uh, it went too far. But like he was saying, yeah, you know, there are like, how do you, how do you say this? Uh, skeletons in the closet when when it comes up to Diddy like you know there's the there's I know Mace is not a fan of him and him and Mace you know back in the day used to be tight you know uh welcome back all that stuff uh, uh I'm all that <laughs> so I'm thinking of all the all the artists that were kind of tied to Diddy that either fell off didn't do well or something happened you know there's Mace who made it out unscathed I or well I don't know Mace shine Biggie Smalls, who they did recently in the last year or so. Uh, Keefe D, I think, is the one who took the rap for it. And then people were saying that it was a hit put on by Puff. I, listen, this is all speculation. But then you got his ex-wife, Kim Porter, who died abruptly in her, like, mid-40s. Um, you got Al B. Shore, who he recently put something out because he was in a coma and I think he tried to say the only reason I got out, I was in the coma was did I don't know. There's a lot of random things. I do know this as well from the perspective of, uh, you know, being someone who's black <laughs> uh, in the black community. There are some people who are kind of upset at the fact that so many black people are coming down on Diddy. But I mean, you know, I think I think the people who are having the issues have good reason mainly because they may or may not have been accosted by him and they want to speak up and speak their truth now that this is a thing that you can do i don't know really how to feel outside of the fact of like you know at the end of the day believe victims and if any of this stuff has happened then it's really sad but uh yeah the raid of his house homeland security got got some info that we don't know i don't know about what's going on with that but they they got some information that's just it's there Loon, who else was tied to Diddy? I don't know. I'm thinking about oh, Danity Kane. I feel like there's a lot. The band, Dylon. There's a lot of people who probably could or may or may not say something in the coming years. So we will see and probably keep ourselves updated on this. But yeah, that's that's all I got for now. 
Okay, so this has been coming up on my timeline for the last week, like over and over and over again. And people have been like messaging me specifically, like tagging me, not specifically, but they have been tagging me, asking my opinion on this. So hopefully this helps you. People have been asking me about the Good Times TV show, animated series, Good Times. You remember Good Times back in the day? Uh, uh, good Times. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I was kind of young. I didn't watch a lot of it, but my dad was actually on the show. Uh, cut to a clip. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea if I can find the clip. <laughs> but the, you know, the wholesome black family sitcom, The Good Times, which was created uh, by, uh, I forget the original creator's names and I apologize, but I know that Norman Lear has like the creator credits on it, but people say that he didn't really create it. He kind of just like uh, gentrified it and took it from the original creator who was a main head executive producer and writer on it who i apologize that i don't know that name and shout out to y'all but yeah good uh good times animated uh originally uh uh put together by a friend of mine uh carl's carl jones who produced on the uh boondocks but he left the project early in the early stages due to uh creative differences and i'm not saying i don't know if he i don't know who created the show but I know that it's coming to Netflix. We're going to watch the trailer. And I was also going to say, I auditioned for this. I auditioned to play both uh, JJ or the, the, I forget, Junior and this little baby character. I would play you my audition, but I feel like that's illegal. So I'm not going to do it. But uh, we'll watch because at the end of the day, I didn't book it. Who cares? And uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll watch this trailer and react and see how we feel. <laughs> Have important news. Let me guess. The state called and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. Hold up. You can get paid for that? This is from a fool who stares at his orange juice every morning. It says concentrate on the box. <laughs> who the dummy now? Shit. Me for not wearing a condom. Woo! Shadows fall over my heart. It all started with my grandfather, James Evans. My job as the man of this house is to take care of this family no matter what. I just want to let you know I'm going to take good care of Gray. <laughs> Daddy, let him go. Baby, you should come with me. Junior's repeating the 10th grade for the third time. Is there anything you can suggest to help him get to the drive through Can you do OnlyFans? Take off your shoes. Let me see what kind of feet you're working with. I'll take you to the dark side. Dear Black Heavenly Father, College Redeemer, uh, if you could just help us. Son, it's for you. New phone. Who this? All black. At least they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. Hmm, man, my mouth ready for some milk right now. Dalvin, why are you so breast obsessed? It's childish, man. Bruh, I'm a baby. I can't get no more childish than that. In a nocturnal state of mind. Your neighborhood is a real shithole. It's the system. They put the guns and drugs on the streets. Underneath this black, black sky. This is getting dangerous. I won't just sit back and let you put yourself in harm's way. I love you too damn much. Everything, everything back. The revolution will not be televised. Come on, Rosa Paws. Can't you just enjoy this? We're just as good as the Evans of old. Isn't that just dynamite? But the truth is, we're the Evans of new. You look like money. Everything, everything black. What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. Everything black, black bird, black moon, black sky, black, 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 everything black. Wait a minute. The baby? Little baby? And baby, baby? Too many babies around this crib. <laughs> Yeah, nah, that was that was uh, that was kind of awkward. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was a little bit. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was strange. It's not the fact. Holy shit, that was wow. That was uh, I didn't expect it to be like that. Okay. Um, initial thoughts. I can see where the controversy is. <laughs> Uh, first off, this video's got, oh boy, it's got 26,000 dislikes 
and only 4.3 thousand uh likes so yeah i i want to think well hold on there's a little breakdown here that i'll read out loud okay so it says it says this in this irreverent reimagining of the tv classic a new generation of the evans families family keeps their heads above water in a chicago pro housing project an unfiltered adult comedy with the voices of uh, yvette nicole brown jb smooth wanda sykes jay farrow and more and good times add good times to your list here from showrunner ron renata shepherd i want to look up who renata shepherd is because i'm curious um and executive producer Stephen, I, I'm not gonna lie, Stephen Curry, you should have never attached your name to this. This is wild. <laughs> uh, Stephen Curry, Norman Lear, and Seth MacFarlane. Mm, I, Nor Norman Lear passed away. Seth MacFarlane, uh, no disrespect. I mean, I, I do enjoy Family Guy. I don't enjoy the fact that y'all had a stereotypical black character being voiced by a white man for so many years, but that's just me. Uh, shout out to my homie uh, Arif, who plays him now. But uh, yeah 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 uh yeah god damn i don't i don't know what to say uh shout out listen i will say this i don't think you can blame the voice actors for for doing a job if i'm being real so like shout out to everybody who is a part of the voice acting cast i mean it, it's complete it was completely up to them at a certain point if they wanted to continue being a part of this show and I mean, listen, it's it's a doggy dog world out here, and we had that whole acting strike. So I mean, people got to make money. Oh, Jesus Christ, sorry, but not by any means necessary. I'm just saying because like it's feat it's got J B Smooth, Yvette Nicole Brown, Jay Farrow, Slink Johnson plays the baby. I auditioned for the baby. Shout out to the homie Slink, and Marseille Martin, who is the she was the little girl on Blackish and whatnot, and Wanda Sykes. I will say. If they were to say this was like an offshoot of this family, which I, I, I don't know if it is. I can't tell if it's supposed to be them reimagined. It does say reimagined, a reverent reimagining for an adult cartoon. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little all over the place with this. I personally think that for a cartoon, especially with what the blueprint of the Good Times show was, hold on good times tv show original trailer yeah hold on good times tv show original trailer yeah like can we compare this to the old good times just to see real quick like the type of uh energy <laughs> the old one was because <laughs> it was wholesome it was like a wholesome black family trying to i i probably still trying to keep their head above water but there were not i think as many negative stereotypes because from what i watched in that trailer it it's how do i say this it's like i get it you can make you know what it is if it was its own if it was its own brand new show not tied to the name I don't think it gets the same level of backlash. This happened before with something else that I can't remember off the top of my head. But when people try to remake classic shows that make you feel something from nostalgia that actually had a positive message and you just want to kind of flip it on its head. Oh, man. Do people hate that? <laughs> Do people hate it, man? All right. Hold on. So I'm just going to look at this quick trailer for good times season one episode one it's like a 46 second trailer that just kind of embodies what the first episode was about don't give me no lip michael i'm only doing this so mama can rest up from her operation bills bills and uh-oh this is an eviction notice he said don't worry about it because they know i'm a hard working man they'll extend me yeah they'll extend you right out into the street <laughs> we're here to remove the contents of this apartment i got 16 bucks that's yours well, thanks, Malona, but I ain't taking no money from friends. Then make an enemy then. A buck's a buck. Getting his pool cue. <laughs> Dying old mate. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry, but two families came up with the rent and messed up our whole day. Come on, Eddie. Let's move. How'd you do it, Daddy? Son, I just made the greatest three cushion shot in the history of Elmo's pool and forest. <laughs> I thank you, too, for that great three cushion shot. 
Okay. I mean, yeah, I kind of get what they were trying to do. They're trying to make like a remix version TV show type of edition. And I think it just missed the mark. You know why it probably did miss the mark is not the fact that they made it so stereotypical what white people embody black people as. It's probably more, well, there is a lot of that, but there's also the fact that the original creators of Good Times, I had heard are not a fan of it. And my, you know, just, just from my own personal, I would say experience and background, I get that. I don't like, like whenever, whenever they don't involve the people that originally created it, or if it's supposed to be like a biopic, a biopic and it's supposed to be about somebody and you're you're taking liberties to make a story without their blessing there that no one likes that <laughs> no one likes that uh yeah it all yeah because because the moment the moment the people tied to it and connect to connected to it say hey we didn't bless this thing that and then you have the court of public opinion and people who enjoyed the original thing saying why would y'all do this? Like, first off, why would you make a mockery of this really, you know, beautiful and popular project from when we were younger? Secondly, if you didn't get the original creator's blessings, then then like figure out how to make it work with them or don't do it. And I think like from the, the background of, you know, I guess entertainment, they're like, well, we shouldn't be limited to not be able to take uh risks and all this stuff but it's like hey man you can take that risk and you can catch an l because like that's the thing when people when you connect people to things that they really care about if you're going to try to you know step on something that they remember so that they have in such hard high regards it's it's not gonna do as well i mean you might get it i doubt you get a season two but you, you got your first season and now people will always remember that you produced that project They'll, or created that thing. Same goes with like the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. If they would have given it to us the way that they showed it to us the first time and didn't listen to complaints, never would have got a sequel, never would have got TV spinoffs, merchandise, all that stuff. Sega would have been like, you know, looking at them like, we didn't approve this. And they didn't too. They didn't like the way it was originally. And next thing you know, it bombs and whoever that director is who wanted to go in that direction and go against everybody telling them that this isn't the way and they're like no i'm gonna express myself creatively if that's what would have happened oh that director never gets a job in hollywood again the people attached to that literally never get jobs again because it's like bad karma it's kind of crazy so i'm on the imdb page right now and it was originally co-created by renata shepherd and my buddy carl jones so my buddy carl jones had i guess i guess he was involved to some degree and then he said, and he recently tweeted online that he stepped away from the project in the early stages and had nothing to do with it after a certain point. So my boy, my boy dodged a bullet. <laughs> but Renata Shepard, I'm not sure uh, she, what she's done. She's worked on Born Again Virgin, Connecting. My buddy Preacher Lawson was on that show. Uh, actor Age. She was a producer on a majority of those, but she was a let's see uh upcoming she is a post executive producer producer showrunner and lizzie mcguire okay Th this is all that they have on her imdb nothing against her uh, i guess this is her nothing against her but i guess you know she can she decided to stick with it and other people were like yeah nah i think i think i'm a i'm a i'm a chill on this one i think i'm a i'm a bounce on this one I, I have the mindset that if you don't get the blessing from the original creators, I don't think you should move forward with it. That's just my opinion. I say that as someone who's related to somebody who I let me just specify this. Hey, I have no say over anything <laughs> that my dad was a part of, nor do I want to. I don't want my, my, my dad's career, but I am saying that, you know, if like like people always message me things like yo if they do another friday you should be a part of it that's not my call i don't i'm not gonna play him i'm not I'm, i don't look like him i can sound like him 
The only opportunity that that would have been available for was the boondocks. There's a video online that I have on my page where you can go watch that whole breakdown. Didn't work out, unfortunately. I would have loved to have been a part of that and made it possible. And that, in my opinion, would have been a good way of like support. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, the people who created that just didn't want didn't want me. So I I, I ain't got nothing to say about it. I, I'm done. I'm done with that scenario. All I all I was saying was, hey, bro, I'm not a fan that they trying to use AI and uh, capitalize off of my dad's hard work. That was my whole thing. Um, and also kind of run me through a dumbass uh, rabbit hole when it came to auditioning. It was really stupid. But you know, I, I will say that I have my other, one only other um, scenario that I have for this that I think makes a lot of sense is I was asked to audition for a TV show that was covering like the early days of the 70s and 80s in comedy re in the last like three years. And they wanted me to audition for the part of Richard Pryor. I don't know how to do a Richard Pryor impression. Uh, I, I could learn it, you know, I, I Jack, blah, blah, I'm sure I could learn it, but I don't have it off the top of my head. I feel like there's a bunch of other people who can do that, but they weren't looking for an impersonation. They were looking for an actor to portray him. And I said to myself, hey, if you want to hire somebody or audition somebody, they might not get the part. They might not fit the role for you. But his youngest son, Mason Pryor, looks like him, sounds like him and probably could get the job done for you. I recommend you go and hire him. And I told them I am not gonna be auditioning for this job. I told my agent, I was like, hey, feel free to send that back their way. I don't feel comfortable doing that. That's just me, you know? Not a lot of people feel that way. There's a lot of, you know, regular people and fans who just look at it like, hey man, just get a, just do the job. I have a different moral compass. <laughs> That's how I see it. Uh, but yes, after watching that that trailer, I absolutely can see why people are not a fan. That was, I mean, it kind of bastardized good times for the wholesome, uplifting show about a black family trying to make it out of a bad spot and, you know, have like the wholesome love and stuff in there. They could have made a similar show to the, to the original, a cartoon to the original. It could have been positive. There's no reason it couldn't have had positive uh, black, not stereotypes, but positive black messages. There's no reason they couldn't have made that funny. But I guess, I don't know. I guess in my, in, in my opinion, it got, uh, what's the word? It, it got, it got new age, like uh, ghettoized. <laughs> Like in the sense of what the term ghetto means and then th and then slapping it on the prop, the IP that is good times. That's what I just saw. No disrespect. Shout out to everybody who worked on it. But I mean, y'all have seen the backlash, right? You 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 have seen it. You ha There's no way you haven't seen it. And uh, that's what happens. That's what happens when you take people's childhood and ruin it <laughs> or their upbringing and ruin it. They don't like that. Like try to make it as close to the source material and give it like the love and care and also the support of the original people or just don't do it because like then you don't catch hell on the internet because now we have the internet and everybody can complain and they can all be critics and critique how they want that's what i saw because yeah that original trailer uh that was weird that was a strange trailer i'm not gonna lie to you that that kind of threw me for sure all right that's it uh best of luck to everybody who's attached to the project, no dis I have no disrespect towards any of you. Uh, love you all. Bye. Um, so this one's not a fun topic. I'm not looking forward to really covering a lot of this, and it might be very short, but there was the bridge in Baltimore, the Scott Key Bridge that collapsed earlier or last week, and um, yeah, it was weird it was crazy it was sad there was a big old uh boat that ran into it i don't know why the boat ran into it according to i think traffic control they said something about how the person at the wheel uh that like the like the boat lost power or something and it just started heading in but then i saw like a weird story about the person who i think ran the boat passing away like on some life insurance stuff. I, I don't know we got to get our facts straight with that let's uh let's transfer over and see what we got 
All right. Unfortunately, if I mean uh, 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 caution to the to the weak, we're gonna we're gonna watch this uh, boat run into this bridge and uh, pray for the survivors. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Where's the thing? Ah. Okay. So there's the boat. There's the bridge. And here here goes nothing. There's not really any. This is just like quiet audio. And then you can see the bridge is like pushing against one of the or excuse me, you see the boat is is now plowing into one of the uh, scaffold. I don't know what you call it. The legs of the bridge. And there it goes. And there were people on it. Uh, that's crazy. It's so sad and weird and uncomfortable. And it like it's just breaking like a Lego set, which is even crazier. I wonder if the people didn't realize like that the boat or that the, the, the boat was bumping into the bridge at that point. You know what I mean? I, I, but it took down one of its legs and you know the boat's probably the bridge has probably been there for like however many years and then that's what you end up with so that that's literally it that's the video uh according according to news sources uh there was eight workers on the bridge and two of them survived i think two of them passed away and uh the one that the two that are that survived are in critical condition and then you got four who were never discovered so i would assume that they did not survive which is really sad i mean but imagine that being your job bro and like that's how you go that's so sad it's not fair like just sitting there sitting there and hanging out and not hanging out obviously you're working and then timber i'm not trying to be funny but i'm, I'm just saying that's that's what it felt like I, I don't have a lot to say about this outside of the fact of how did they not get in contact with that boat fast enough like why was the person the people on the boat not reaching out and saying hey clear the bridge clear the bridge <laughs> or traffic controller can we like get people off of that bridge because uh, we cannot control this boat and we are about to run into it and who knows if there were people on the boat that got injured too that's also a question but this is just me covering this and I, there's not much else to say i'm uh, very sad for the victims and their families and I, I i wish everybody else the best caitlin clark she's the greatest shooter in the nb college circuit for ladies i believe she is i believe she has the, the most shots ever something like that she's a really talented uh, basketball player and everyone's got their eyes on her especially the king of mount westmore ice cube yay yay uh yeah no ice cube offered her five million dollars to come play in the big three which is the like summertime basketball tournament thing where it's like three on three uh basketball players from back in the day and I think, honestly, I think she'd do fine. I think she'd cook. I mean, if anybody set her a screen and she's wide open to shoot, she's going to drain that. So we'll see. But, I mean, I don't know if she's going to be able to take uh, – maybe she will. Them OGs are old, bro. She might be able to cross some OGs over. I'm not sure. <laughs> what the heck? Sorry, there was like a piece of fluff on me. Uh, but, yeah, let's watch a quick little snippet of Pat McAfee asking Ice Cube what – are the plans for Caitlin Clark in the big three? All right, let's see what we got. Uh, I know, you know, at the end of the day. Oops. You know, kind of where do we stand on this particular offer as we speak right now, Q? Um, you know, it's always 50 50 till we get a, a no, you know, at the end of the day. Us, uh, it is a generous offer. Um, you know, and look, you know, we're in a new age, you know, it's like NIL. Um, you know, when, when we came up with the idea, you know, our sponsors, our partners, they all want to make it happen. So, you know, we was able to make that generous offer. All right. I don't need to watch all this stuff. You get it. Listen, she got invited to the big three. It's an eight week summer boot camp of basketball. <laughs> it's not a boot camp, but, you know, playing against uh, all all these retired uh, legendary NBA players and some players who aren't NBA players. I believe they let like street ballers in there as well, because I feel like, uh, has he God played in a game or two? I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, I don't know if Caitlin Clark's going to do that because she's the biggest thing in real, like major sports right now. And it might rub the WNBA wrong. But then again, according to everybody who's 
who's checked the facts on uh, what she would be making if she went to the WNBA, it would be pennies compared to what Ice Cube is offering her. I believe your rookie contract is only 75 grand and Ice Cube is offering her $5 million to play in eight games, technically 10. I mean, I would, I shoot, I'd take the deal, but I, I don't, but she already has a bunch of deals. Uh, he just mentioned the NIL deals. NIL is the name, uh, name, image, and likeness deals that uh, college players are allowed to have nowadays, which means they're all able to make real money, which is good. They don't make money off of the networks that put them on TV, though, which is still, still, still kind of scummy, but they are allowed to monetize their name, image, and likeness. So, Caitlin Clark can get a sponsorship with, I don't know, Chick-fil-A or Dove Soap or whatever it is. Like, uh, there's there's a few players like that uh, really funny character dude who's at Duke right now. Uh, I was two days in college. I forget his name. <laughs> he's funny, though. I forget his name, but he's a, he's a hooper. And he's got an NIL deal with a few different companies. And they're making, like, millions of dollars already, which is great for the top, like, I don't know, 40 athletes that are playing in college right now, because if we're being honest, there's not, there's like not everyone on the team is getting money, which that's gotta be frustrating. <laughs> but at the end of the day, get good scrub, get better. Like you can't just be whack and be mad at me that you're whack and I'm really nice. And I've got, I, I've got lofty goals where I'm actually gonna go play in, in the next level of this and you, are a uh, uh, riding the bench that's not my fault you just you came here for college i came here for a career so, so not to mention the fact that caitlin clark actually just beat lsu sorry iowa iowa it, it feels like she's just the team by herself but she and her girls over to iowa just defeated lsu in what is i guess a lot of people thinking a revenge game but it was more of just a you know they're meeting in the elite eight again and last year it was for the championship Iowa versus LSU and LSU beat them. Angel Reese, all the other girls on the team this time. Uh, Caitlin Clark got her lick back and she's going to the final four. So looking forward to seeing her in the finals and hopefully winning. And uh, yeah, she's a hooper, bro. She's like, she's nice. Like I, I, I watched some of the game highlights and like, she's got, she's got like the, she's got like the, like a nice little tween tween behind the back, step back cat like jumper like she's she she can cook she can play she's really good very good so that's uh that's where it is i don't think caitlin clark's gonna take this though i'm pretty sure she's already made a few million off of her name image and likeness and also i don't know i i wouldn't want if i was her i wouldn't want to go into the uh, the big three and get hurt by old old scrubby uh ex nba players who hack and foul <laughs> that's that's how i see it but um Either way, that's just uh, that's just my thought on on this. But yeah, shout out to Caitlyn. She's a she's a prodigy. Mm -hmm. So there's more traumatizing things that happened in the news the last week or so. I don't know if y'all follow people on TikTok. I watch TikTokers, TikTokers, TikTokers. I watch uh, TikTokers, <laughs> and this one TikToker got into a very serious situation with his ex baby mother the mother of his child because it's now been i guess uh exposed that he has a child as well but there's the this creator named angry reactions it's a young black man named onye who is a character of him like a caricature of himself online where he, he's always angry that's his thing he's just kind of like hmm, i'm angry that's me hmm. And it's like funny. It's like a angry, jokey type of thing. So I guess, unfortunately, uh, he got caught up in this. Uh, this uh, they call they call it DV because you're not you're not allowed to say the words anymore. Domestic violence. <laughs> he, he got caught up in some domestic domestic violence allegations from his uh, ex girlfriend slash the mother of his child. And uh, yeah, man, um, she did not press charges against him. It, it, it came up on TMZ and then she didn't press charges. And then he went on the Internet and then he started talking about the whole scenario, kind of making it look like it was the girl's fault to begin with. And I don't think she liked that. Well, she definitely didn't like that because then she started to expose him. And when she started to expose him, 
that's when things went left and he got really upset and had a bit of a I, I guess you'd call it a manic episode on his TikTok live. So we're going to look at a clip of that and then we will uh, talk more about this. You know, Ed, you know, I'm not this time of you know this. You know this, bro. Everybody coming at me again, bro. Bro, I'm. I'm so he's on the phone with his dad because the girl is now coming out with uh, I, her, her proof, her alleged proof, I guess you'd have to say that, of being uh, assaulted or uh, domestic vi assaulted. Yes, what it is. Um, and he's having a meltdown on live ta telling his dad he swears he didn't do it. So, dad, bro, I'm so mad right now, bro. <laughs> I'm so mad right now, bro. I'm so mad, bro. I'm so mad, bro. All right, so this is, yeah, his dad's got the right idea. Get off the internet, my boy. <laughs> He's trying to let him know, bro, you don't need to be doing this on live. Like, please don't do this. And I'm in a... And I recommend that just because in the court of public opinion, this is not helping you. This makes you look almost more guilty because you're having a bit of a like an episode or, or you know, you, you have you're having a legitimate reaction. It's a valid reaction, but he's young. He's probably never been through something like this. And now he's like screaming into his phone about how he didn't he didn't do it. And it almost feels like, well, if you didn't do it, then why are you reacting so big? Dang, bro. Like almost almost like you might have been guilty and you're upset that she's exposing you now because she she has messages, photos and um, pictures of her of bruises on herself. So there's things in there. I'm just going to skip ahead and see what we got. They're trying to point the fingers at me and act like I'm the problem when you know you're the problem. Hurting me the most, and is that she knows the truth. <laughs> His dad is like, all right, can you please get off the live stream, son? <laughs> please. All right. So he I mean, I think I actually didn't even look at the proper one because there there was a video of him where he was literally just like screaming and yelling and all that stuff. But there's that. But then this girl, this is the girl, the ex-girlfriend, a.k.a. the mother of his child. And then this is her response to it. Where's the proof of me attacking him? You are clearly not strong enough to be in this relationship. Yeah. If everything, no. if, if, if everything, you can't. Boy, stop stop touching me. Just get that. I me. could be. Stop touching me. Okay. I could be strong enough if you played your fucking part. Why did you say? Yes. I told you. <laughs> I'm fucking pushing me. I told you. Keep your hands off of me, yeah. buddy. What is wrong with you? So it says, once again, I asked a question and she got upset and pushed me. I was standing at the same distance the entire conversation and I find it funny how all of a sudden I am too close when she rages. She attacks me again and grabs my, I grab her arms. I mean, if, if we talk in Jonathan Major's uh, court case, bro, you need to leave that house. You cannot touch her. You cannot say any, you need to go, bro. You gots to go. Or Mickey Mouse got to come get you. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You got you gots to go. So from what I'm seeing, obviously it seems that the 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 the, the ex girlfriend has some some mental and not mental but emotional stuff. I, listen, I've been in in a relationship like this where you say the wrong thing and uh, you catch a shoe to the corner, shoe heel to the corner of your eye, and you're like, oh, where would that come from? I mean, in younger relationships, this this is actually well, the abuse hopefully is not a normal thing, but I think the overflowing of emotions is fairly normal. And I don't think anybody should be physically abusive with each other. But I don't know, man, something about dating in your early 20s <laughs> and not being fully developed mentally or having the capacity to have conversations is really crazy speaking of which remember that one uh tiktoker i used to follow him like i dm'd him and he um he unalived his wife his ex no his ex-wife his co-parenting wife 
and her boyfriend. Uh, Buddy do, used to do the uh, the Skyrim videos where he'd be like, "Hey, hey, where are you going?" I, if you, if you're watching the video, you know what I'm talking about. I forgot dude's name. He used to do impressions too. He had like a like a Takashi Six Nine impression and a few other videos, and he was collaborating with like big content creators. And then one day, for some reason, he went to his ex wife slash girlfriend's house and unalived her and her boyfriend just because he was jealous and possessive and ruined his daughter's life by taking her mother's life i i don't know i recommend staying off the internet it seems like a very dangerous place for some people i feel like a lot of people don't have the mental capacity to handle what comes with this social media parasocial relationships Listen, it's hard to learn how to be a well-known person if you got famous in your bedroom. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying. You might wanna go take like a, a, public, a public speaking class or, 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 uh, or therapy. Therapy is what I'm talking about. You need it. It should be mandatory. I feel like at the age of 18 or under or above, you should have had therapy. I think should therapy from, from the age of three to 27 <laughs> i don't know uh but yeah all right lastly i'm gonna show the proof that the girl has of her alleged ab abuse that she had received from uh the dude angry reactions and then we'll call it and uh you know let's just see according according to i think him he's saying that these are different bruises but i mean i don't listen i don't know Where's Dr. Umar when you need him? I'm just <laughs> Black Queens forever, snow bunnies never. I'm just joking. <laughs> so wait, so it says, I know. So he posted this video where he said, I know bruises on any woman look crazy, but take a look at the, these pictures posted and really think about how she could have gotten them. These are bruises from different situations. What situations would she be in where she's getting other bruises? Isn't she just taking care of your child? I'm not sure. And she took these videos and footage these pictures down mainly because people were calling, were like harassing her and saying that she was lying. And she was like, you know what? I'm whatever. I'm done. Cause he's already, there is a power dynamic here. He's too popular. He's too well known. He has a huge fan base. He's gonna, they're gonna treat him. They're gonna treat him better, you know? But in the court of public opinion, the world isn't. The world already got, saw that TMZ article and saw her these photos and videos so it's very uh sad and upsetting but you know he uh, innocent innocent till proven guilty i don't know we'll see all right what is this music some naruto oh my gosh okay those look bad if these are from him she's claiming that these were from him and if that's the case that's insane now ask yourself does this look like a woman being abused or a woman trying to be Tamed? I don't know what that. I don't know. I don't know who wrote this. <laughs> what tamed? I don't know. There was also text messages that she had that I. I think she deleted the videos on those. I don't know what to think. Y'all, let me know what y'all think because last time I checked, uh, this is abuse on both sides. I'm gonna say we heard the woman, uh, his ex, screaming at him when when she get when he gave her an answer she didn't like. We also are seeing pictures of what may or may not be domestic violence. And uh, there was also text messages that I remember I happened to, she, she posted, but I don't know, I guess, if anybody's got any updates on that. Cause maybe, maybe she, uh, maybe she got rid of the, didn't post those. I'm not sure, but they were pretty aggressive. Kind of like how you saw Jonathan Majors talking about like, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something crazy if you don't do this just I don't know man I I don't really have much advice on this at all uh best of luck to both of them I hope the baby's okay I hope that they can take care of that baby and treat it with love and care even though they're not going to be together in the future and that is how I feel about said situation <laughs> All right, y'all, that, that was a new episode. JD Radio, man, somewhat consistent. I think I'm uploading this on Tuesday. I'm definitely uploading this possibly a day late because I recorded the first half 
Uh, and then I had to take a break and then record the second half. But if you enjoyed it, that's all that matters. And, um, you know, you can send me topics to talk about. You can send me questions. There's the link in the bio that will allow you to send me voicemails. And I would love to hear from you. Also, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to be consistent and give you all something to check out every other week. Thank you for watching, listening. I got stand-up comedy dates. Click the link in bio for those. I'll also be uh, posting more of this, like, stand-up comedy vlog thing that you all like. I it's I don't know why it's so popular, but it's not. I mean, it's not super popular. But you all like it. That's what I like. So... That's cool, man. I, I don't know what's going to happen this week and what I'll be reviewing next week. But if you have a suggestion, fair, 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 fair not. I don't know what I'm saying. Thank you. Uh, submit, submit topics to me so I don't have to keep rambling about random things. Unless you like this. If you like it, that's great. I love it. I like it. You love it. You love it. I like it. All right. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'll see you on the next one. Till next time. Peace. Radio. <laughs> 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 <laughs>